Now, I hope you're giving some thought as to who is right in this case, because obviously they all cannot be right. So why don't you give some thought and figure it out? But let's quickly turn to Zeno. Now, as I said, Zeno was Parmenides' student and lover. And by the way, you know, I know there are a few chuckles out there among those listeners. Uh, homosexuality was the common practice in... Um, in ancient Greece, it was not uncommon for you know, a teacher and a student or a teacher to have a, you know, or an older person, to ha- an older man to have a younger uh, boy that he was, uh, who was his lover. So Zeno was not only Parmenides' student, but reputed to be his lover. Well, Zeno defends Parmenides' view using what he calls his paradoxes. They're known as Zeno, Zeno's paradoxes. And they're arguments resembling mathematical proofs. In fact, they are mathematical proofs. And here's what they do. Our senses lead us to believe that there are things in motion, right? We see things moving. That things are extended in space. They they're take up space. And that time is going on. Now, if there is only one thing and it's never changing, nothing's moving. There can't be space because you could have a change in space that's being occupied. You have a change in time. So if Parmenides is correct, all of these things aren't real. And Zeno has his paradoxes to show that motion, space, and time are not real. Now, this might seem like an absolutely bizarre, crazy view to you, that is Parmenides' view, and Zeno's paradoxes, if you spent the time to look at it, you might think that they're absolutely bizarre, but it's very difficult to see what's wrong with them. And the entire ancient world, including Socrates and Plato, could not refute these arguments.